other form of carbohydrates to discuss with polysaccharides okay the main polysaccharides we do aware starch and glycogen poly means many saccharides means sugars many sugars club together or join together okay to form a single polysaccharide right example two types are there i mean classification homopolysaccharides heteropolysaccharides homopolysaccharide example starch glycogen dextrin inulin or cellulose you can study heteropolysaccharides we do have uh, examples like hyaluronic acid chondroitin sulfate okay heparin dermatan sulfate keratin sulfate right so we will discuss one by one okay first we'll discuss about homopolysaccharides so the major predominant homopolysaccharide to discuss that is starch okay starch it's a reserve carbohydrate in plants okay we are all know okay how do starch synthesize in plants by using carbon dioxide with the help of sunlight okay and the uh, pigment that is chlorophyll plants do synthesize starch okay the storage form of carbohydrate in plants is starch by the process photosynthesis okay and what is the composition of starch so under which category this starch is coming so starch is a homopolysaccharide that means it is a made up of it is made up of repetitive units of glucose okay repetitive units of glucose which glucose alpha d glucose okay and the bond is alpha d the alpha d glycosidic bond okay here i am showing writing so g1 g2 g3 g4 g5 so all these glucose units held together by glycosidic linkage and starch majorly comprised of two uh, two major units that is amylose and then amylopectin i'll tell you what's the difference between amylose and amylopectin okay amylose is water soluble compared to amylopectin okay because amylopectin uh, because of uh, branching it is uh, more or like water insoluble okay so amylose and amylopectin amylose is a chemically a long unbranched chain that means we have already discussed okay uh, in starch few of the chains will be linear few of the chains will be branched so as we have said two parts are there in starch amylose and amylopectin okay amylose is a straight chain that means linear one okay which accounts for 15 to 20 percent of the starch okay and larger extent okay contribution by amylopectin which is 80 to 85 percent right so as i discussed amylose is a unbranched one which comprises of 200 to 1000 glucose units which are all held together by alpha 14 glycosidic linkage okay and amylopectin which is branched i have already told you branches in the sense tree you can see right okay from the stem branches will be coming out right so here amylopectin along with alpha 14 glycosidic linkage it also have alpha 16 glycosidic linkage okay the reason for branching is amylopectin carries alpha 16 glycosidic linkage which facilitates for this branching and the main advantage of this branching is the more the branching the more glucose units will be facilitated or embedded in the starch okay it requires less space in less space more number of glucoses can be packed okay as i mentioned amylose are having only few i mean like uh, 200 to 1000 units but amylopectin can accommodate thousands of glucose glucose units because of the main facility branching okay and starch is hydrolyzed by the enzyme amylase okay which is present in saliva as well as the secretions of pancreas okay and this starch after digestion converts to maltose and then free glucose units so here in the slides i can uh, i can show you here all the glucose units which are uh, uh, glucose monomers uh, you are seeing here okay and the branches also you can see here okay the branches 
accommodates more number of glucose okay and starch gives positive test to iodine test okay iodine test is the only test which can confirm the presence of polysaccharides that is starch and next similar kind of homopolysaccharide we have to study dextrins okay dextrin is a partially hydrolyzed product of starch by acids or enzymes in our body also when we consume starch okay with the help of digestive enzymes starch directly will not produce glucose first it should undergo partial hydrolysis in the saliva i mean the mouth and then the stomach and finally it reach to intestinal tract right so there is forms dextrins okay that means partially hydrolyzed products of starch okay and these dextrins again undergo further hydrolysis further broke down to form simpler forms like maltose and from there to glucose okay and the various intermediates are soluble starch like amylodextrins erythrodextrins arcodextrins each of these dextrins will give different color with the iodine test suppose uh, erythrodextrin arcodextrin they will give brown color with iodine test okay amylodextrin will give uh, starch will give blue color with iodine okay and all dextrins have free sugar groups and can show mild reducing property coming to the next poly homopolysaccharide that is glycogen okay starch is a uh, type of homopolysaccharide which stores in the plant, uh, plants and glycogen is a type of uh, carbohydrate okay homopolysaccharide which stores in animals so that's why glycogen is also known as animal starch okay and in the body in the liver and in uh, larger extent okay in liver glycogen will store and lesser extent and um, i mean lesser amounts in the skeletal muscles okay the structure of glycogen is similar to that of amylopectin so we have already discussed the structure of amylopectin right the more branching okay compared to amylose amylopectin is having more branching okay similarly glycogen structure is similar to amylopectin okay that means glycogen is highly branched okay highly branched what are the linkages it carry it carries alpha 14 glycosidic linkage at the same time it also carries alpha 16 glycosidic linkage okay so it doesn't have any food value unlike starch as it is going to be stored inside the body the next homopolysaccharide to discuss is cellulose okay because cellulose we cannot digest the cellulose but it do have other physiological significance okay the cellulose where it is present the main source of cellulose is a plant cell wall okay the plant cell wall made up of made by cellulose okay and it is what is the, the difference between starch and cellulose okay starch is made up of alpha d glucose and cellulose is made up of beta d glucose okay that is only the difference okay and the linkage is beta 14 all the glucose in cellulose are linked by beta 14 glycosidic linkage glycosidic linkage why we cannot digest cellulose because we humans lacks an enzyme called cellulase okay because i have mentioned in a previous videos in the properties of monosaccharides okay we humans can utilize only d form of glucose okay but here cellulose is made uh, alpha d form of glucose but cellulose is made up of beta d glucose so amylase also alpha in form okay alpha d glucose has to be digested in the sense it should be acted by alpha amylase similarly we as we don't have any cellulase enzyme okay which acts on beta 14 uh, glycosidic linkage we cannot digest cellulose so it cannot be absorbed okay it cannot be absorbed so importance of cellulose though it not get digested it has got greater importance in human nutrition okay main dietary fiber okay nowadays uh, uh, like uh, more most of the dietitians used to prescribe if anyone want to undergo like uh, like diet conscious or if they are uh, dieting what dietitian suggests you should consume food which is rich of more dietary fiber okay and uh, that means uh, unfried vegetables like cooked vegetables 
raw vegetables raw fruits all these have okay they do have cellulose but we don't get any energy from cellulose because we cannot digest it and the cellulose cannot be absorbed right but still it do carry some physiological significance that is it increases the peristalsis movement that means bowel movements of the intestine so if there is a increase in bowel movements it prevents the constipation okay so it prevents the constipation and as it is filling up the intestine it slows down the absorption of glucose rapid absorb see when your glucose level is rapidly absorbing in intestine and to the blood there should be shoot in insulin secretion which is very dangerous condition that means uh, makes your uh, pancreas to exhaust of uh, insulin levels so the person may be prone to diabetic so this condition will be avoided if your food is in rich of dietary fibers which slows down the absorption of glucose and prevents the sudden shoot of insulin in the blood okay not only glucose it also slows down the absorption of cholesterol okay and next thing is it increases the bulk of stool and preventing the constipation and okay as i mentioned it it mobilizes the intestinal movements and it's uh, it is also acting like a stool softener so like it prevents the hemorrhoids okay the condition like hemorrhoids okay and it is also reduces the incidence of cardiovascular diseases colon cancers diabetes as i told you cardiovascular diseases in the sense it slows down the absorption of cholesterol okay and at the same time diabetes it prevents the sudden shoot of uh, insulin from the pancreas okay all these things make uh, cellulose a physiologically significant one okay and the next polysaccharide to be described inulin so far uh, we have discussed the polymers of glucose like starch is also polymer of glucose glycogen is also polymer of glucose and cellulose which is a polymer of glucose but beta d glucose beta glucose okay but the main importance of inulin here is it is a polymer of d fructose okay it is a polymer of d fructose and the linkage is beta 1 to glycosidic linkage it exists in uh, under uh, underground uh, vegetable uh, like bulbs of onions and in garlic okay it is a lowest molecular weight substance or polysaccharide which is easily soluble in water it is not utilized by the body okay and the importance of inulin is that it is used in assessment of glomerular filtration rate to assess your glomerulus which is active or healthy or not okay inulin because it neither be absorbed nor be filtered okay right neither uh, neither absorbed nor secreted so that's why inulin can be used in assessment of glomerular filtration rate gfr okay